Welcome to this Deep Lizard series where we deliver bite-sized, practical, and intuitive explanations for the most common terms and concepts in the field of deep learning. I'm Mandy, and the topic of this episode is activation functions. In an artificial neural network, an activation function applies a non-linear transformation to the output of a layer. These activation functions are loosely inspired by the type of activity that occurs in our brains where we have different neurons that fire or are activated by different stimuli. To illustrate this, we have this example here. On the left, we have a scenario where we are totally vegged out, maybe binge watching our favorite show in front of our laptop. And here we have this group of neurons that are firing or that are being activated by this show, by this activity of vegging out that we're engaging in. Now on the right, we have another scenario where we are putting our bodies through physical stress by working out and exercising. And here we have a different group of neurons in our brain that are being activated by this particular type of activity. Now, this is just the general motivation for the intuition behind an activation function. But now let's check out exactly what it does whenever we apply it to a layer of a neural network. Now, recall for any given fully connected layer present within a network that the output of any node is going to be the weighted sum of its inputs. So for this example, we have 160 multiplied by 0.35, this weight that is connecting this input to the node. And then we add that to the input of 55 multiplied by 0.2. So this weighted sum is going to give us 67, and this is considered the pre-activated output from this node. Now, after calculating this weighted sum, we then pass it as input to an activation function. The activation function will then give us the activated output from this node, which will then be sent as the final output from this layer. This is what will be passed as input to the following layer. A key point about the activation function that we use is that it is non-linear, and we have multiple different types of activation functions, but one very popular one that we use often is called RELU, which stands for Rectified Linear Unit. RELU just takes the maximum between the value 0 and what it is passed as input. So here, ReLU is accepting 67, the weighted sum as input, and then it calculates the maximum between 67 and 0, and of course, that is 67. We'll learn much more detail about ReLU in a later lesson. Now, we talked about the importance of the fact that the activation function that we use is nonlinear, but why is that? Well, one key point about linear functions is that if we have a composition of linear functions, then that composition itself will also be linear. When we pass data through to fully connected layers like we've done here, we're performing a weighted sum, which is just a linear transformation on the data. So even if we have a very deep neural network made up of many fully connected layers, if all we are doing is linear transformations on the data, then that means that the learned mapping by the network from the input to the output is going to be linear as well. We can actually illustrate this a bit better with a diagram here. Typically, the type of mapping that we attempt to learn with a neural network is oftentimes more complex than just a simple linear one. By including nonlinear activation functions in a neural network, we allow the network to model an arbitrarily complex function. When we have a network used for image classification, for example, its job is to divide the output space between the classes for which it's trained on. So here we have exemplified a network that has been trained to classify images of dumbbells and kettlebells. And we can see that the network has learned this nonlinear boundary within the output space that separates these two classes from each other. We can imagine that if the network was only able to approximate a linear function, that it wouldn't be able to divide these two classes as accurately. Here we have outlined some of the popular activation functions, so the 
popular AF means popular activation functions. What else would it mean? <laughs> but some popular activation functions are uh, ReLU, which we exemplified earlier with an earlier example. We also have Sigmoid and Softmax, and we will outline these activation functions in later lessons in more detail.